Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in Freshman English. And we are continuing these introductory pages of unit number four. And I'm with you on page 613. We turn now to two Pat Mora offerings. The first one is Uncoiling. And let's read a little bit about Pat Mora. A, uh, born in 1942, a bilingual, bicultural Mexican-American often includes Spanish words and phrases in her poems. Her poetry is rich in imagery and feeling, and she often urges her readers to write poems and to enjoy wordplay. This poem presents a vivid image of a tornado. So write that down. Uncoiling a powerful picture of a tornado. Just read along, and then we'll annotate once we're finished. Uncoiling by Pat Mora. With thorns, she scratches on my window, tosses her hair dark with rain, snares lightning, cholla, hawks, butterfly swarms in the tangles. She sighs clouds, head thrown back, eyes closed, roars, and rivers leap. Boulders retreat like crabs into themselves. She spews gusts and thunder, spooks pale women who scurry to lock doors, windows, when her tumbleweed skirt starts its spin. They sing lace lullabies so their children won't hear her uncoiling through her lips, howling leaves off trees, flesh off bones until she becomes sound, spins herself to sleep, sand stinging her ankles whirring into her raw skin like stars. All right, let's take a look now at this poem. This is a brilliant little personification of what a tornado is like, right? First of all, note what uh, your textbook company says at 15. What type of figurative language is introduced in the first stanza, and what is the effect? Well, obviously you've got personification going on here, don't you? In other words, the tornado is like a woman who scratches on your window and then tosses her hair dark with rain, right? At number 16, what emotions do the images in these lines convey? She sighs clouds, head thrown back, eyes closed, roars and rivers leap. It's almost as if the tornado is making fun, right? Uh, um, uh, jo joking with the people who are obviously freaked out. At 17, what does this figurative language describe? The boulders retreating like crabs. She's spewing the gusts and the thunder. In other words, it's almost like she is so powerful as she's spinning that she creates all kinds of chaos. And then ultimately, she leads moms to freak out, lock their doors, and tell their children that everything's going to be okay. Notice the sound devices at number 18. Sound spins herself to sleep, sand stinging her ankles, whirling into her, her raw skin like stars. It's a compelling final simile as well. Well, let's just say it 2A really quickly what this poem is about. It really is just about trying to help you appreciate or understand a tornado, right? But let's go ahead and say, secondly, this is a poem that wants you to appreciate and respect the forces of nature. So let's write that one down. A poet, without saying it, can say, you should really respect the forces and power of nature. The next thing that we'll say about this at 2B, obviously the powerful similes, the powerful personification, a, a, a tornado as a beautiful woman with her hair slinging it back over her head. It's a compelling image. And the next time you see a picture of a, of a tornado, or you're actually in a tornado, this is a different way to maybe look at it. At level 3A, what's your favorite text that talks about the forces of nature and the power of nature? What's your favorite film about tornadoes, right? And the freakiness of being in a tornado. And finally at 3B, what is your view about respecting the forces of nature, the freaky stuff nature can do. What is for you a way that you relate to that? What is a story from your own life when you learned the force of nature and you had to respect that force, right? Maybe you were out on the mountain, maybe you were out on the water, and all of a sudden the forces of nature taught you the gravity of the experience. Well, there you go, an introduction to Uncoiling by Pat Mora. Thank you.